Hello, my name is Andrei. Welcome back. Uh, today I'll explain how to implement generic workflow using Fast API and Python and running uh, this on <coughs> our open source um, infrastructure uh, called uh, Skipper. Let's um, see the architecture for Skipper. Um, it, it based on three parts, engine, communication and microservices. Engine and communication, these two blocks are generic and these blocks can be reused from uh, application to application. Uh, microservices part comes with a sample set of uh, ML services for data training and uh, serving or prediction. And you could either alter the services for your own requirements or you could create uh, additional services uh, or replace existing ones. You can check more about this I was explaining in my previous video. Today I'll uh, explain how workflow container works, uh, which is part of engine. And workflow, um, yeah, the impl current implementation of workflow is quite basic or simple. Uh, the goal of, of the workflow is uh, based on a key which is coming from the REST API to return a queue uh, where, we should, uh, where we should submit uh, event and this queue will be processed by RabbitMQ message broker delivered to the receiver and the receiver will, will produce the response and send it back um, to the publisher and pu publisher would return it back to the REST API client. Um, you could replace the workflow uh, container with your own implementation if you want and use uh, Skipper infrastructure as a blueprint or you could use existing workflow uh, container adjusted based on your requirements and uh, you'll be good to go. So, first of all, how you would run this infrastructure? Uh, there are three ways. Uh, first, you could uh, uh, run uh, on your local Python environment each, uh, each block. Uh, second, uh, you could run, you could use existing scripts to um, uh, with Docker Compose to build containers and run containers. And the third option would be uh, based on provided scripts uh, run Skipper on Kubernetes environment. Uh, today, uh, uh, we'll keep it uh, more simple and we'll uh, run everything on with Docker Compose with containers. Uh, to run on Docker Compose and start up all, all the containers, it's enough to run just one command. Uh, this one, Docker Compose up build minus D and uh, entire Skipper infrastructure will be up and running. Once it will be up, you could access uh, fast API endpoint by this URL. And now if I uh, go to the um, command prompt and if I would check uh, which containers are running, I see entire Skipper infrastructure is up, all the containers are available. That's good. So now we can um, go and check the source code and later I'll, I'll show how the workflow works as well. So we'll uh, let's go to the uh, visual code editor directly on the GitHub. This is more convenient to, uh, more convenient to browse the, the code from the repository. Okay, we'll close this one and that. So first, first of all, let's uh, Let's look into the API itself. So this um, API uh, project, which is packaged into the, its own container when it runs on Docker. And this um, um, uh, Python, Python script called router, uh, router implements uh, fast API endpoints. So this uh, one uh, function which uh, handles asynchronous requests and another one which handles uh, synchronous. And these two functions are uh, uh, created in generic way because they accept a uh, parameter which specifies a request type. And based on request type, later call to the workflow is made and uh, workflow returns which uh, queue should be used to process that request. Uh, so let's look into the asynchronous first. Uh, over here, <coughs> we start asynchronous task uh, using a salary library. And this task is initiated over here under tasks. There's a process workflow method 
it gets all the parameters and here it makes a, makes a call to the workflow container with the task type, right? And then and workflow is responsible based on this task type to return the, the queue, which we should use to communicate with Rabbit and queue. Uh, based on that queue, we will push uh, event to the message broker. And this is uh, how the communication is done with the workflow. In case when we run synchronous requests, when we don't need to wait and we expect response to come immediately, uh, directly inside uh, FastAPI uh, function endpoint, we call the same workflow helper and we pass the task type and we get back the queue name. So let's see what this workflow, uh, how the workflow helper works. So workflow helper comes from the skipper library and um, skipper library uh, hides all the uh, specific code to the um, uh, which um, relates to RabbitMQ or to Skipper itself, like uh, logging utilities or workflow utilities. So uh, this code uh, can be uh, um, reused from one uh, container to another. Uh, so we package all this usable code into the library. But when call is made, uh, workflow container is being invoked. And this is the place where workflow container project is located and we have uh, another router um, file that is over here and all the projects uh, uh, like um, workflow, logger, API, uh, then microservices projects, they all follow the same uh, uh, code structure. Everywhere you would see similar um, patterns. There is an entry script and then this um, uh, under API uh, package these uh, scripts that handle actual business logic. So uh, over here we have execute workflow queue name method, and uh, what we are doing here we are calling uh, get queue name from the workflow uh, from the script, and here we're just loading a JSON file and based on the keys from this JSON file. Um, uh, we are uh, getting the queue name and um, there are a separate group of uh, keys you could have for the synchronous and asynchronous, asynchronous uh, events because you may uh, use the same um, uh, key name uh, like training and it can be either synchronous or asynchronous call. So uh, depending from which function call is made to the uh, workflow container, the uh, the name of uh, of this uh, event is uh, basically uh, suffixed with the either sync or async. Okay, and then when we get the value, it's being returned back uh, as a queue name, and then based on that queue name, um, through the RabbitMQ API, I will push the uh, uh, event uh, to the message broker, and it will be sent to the a receiver for the photo processing. Okay, so let's see how it actually runs. Uh, let's uh, test our API, which runs on local Docker infrastructure. Mm, okay, uh, we get back that API is running, which is good. And next, we'll uh, execute uh, asynchronous call to run model training. And this is the task type we specified training. And actually, this uh, task type will be used uh, uh, in our case over here in tasks. This is the task type which will be submitted to the workflow container. And based on the task type, uh, asynchronous task, task type will get back the queue name where uh, event should be published. Right. OK, and if we look uh, into the logger, so if we have a salary. Um, logger uh, log is printed over here. We can clean it up, and then we have another logger for the API, and this another logger for the workflow. So let's um, initiate a request for the model training. Request was submitted. Task ID is returned, and we can see that. Uh, the API call was locked for uh, for the API, and then 
uh, we got uh, message logs for the salary asynchronous tax execution and task is already completed and workflow container was invoked as well which should uh, return the queue name and because uh, salary reports that task is completed we actually uh, can check and model is already built we, we run boston housing um, uh, house prediction uh, house price prediction uh, model and just run 50 iterations and it's quite fast so it just does, uh, it runs in maybe five seconds. And let's uh, see through API if um, based on a salary task ID. Uh, so let's copy paste correct ID. Okay, and we here execute, yeah, and task is completed. So we can go next and execute another um, synchronous request with task type serving and in this case when we execute synchronous request <coughs> then uh, it will go to the this uh, endpoint exec workflow task sync and it will make a call to workflow and will pass pass a task type uh, a suffix <coughs> with, a, with the sync um, uh, with, the, with the sync suffix basically and based on that we'll get like previously, it will get the queue name where uh, event will be sent uh, into the message broker. Okay, so uh, we do a call and we also pass uh, data. And this is just a dummy data because we don't care about uh, response and we pass uh, data. Um, uh, and based on this data regression will be executed and uh, uh, house price uh, will be um, calculated with also uh, with price tax uh, ratio two parameters will be returned so this is the response uh, this is the outcome and this generic api uh, returns uh, basically model prediction results okay so let's switch to To the main screen and here yeah, what i can say um, in this video i was trying to show you how you could implement generic workflow with fast api and how based on on the task type you could um, invoke another container workflow container there from there you could return the queue name and based on the queue uh, you could submit the event to the uh, to the rabbit in queue so hopefully this quick uh, explanation was useful and uh, hopefully it um, uh, makes it more clear how to use uh, Skipper. And as I said, if you need something more complex workflow, uh, you can replace current workflow container. And this is the main idea of Skipper, to keep it simple and allow customization. So thanks for watching and uh, see you next time. Bye.